Algebra 2, Lesson 28, Part A is complex fractions. A complex fraction is just a fraction with another fraction in it. And you can see we have those here in our examples. All right, so we start out with a reminder of the fundamental principle of fractions, otherwise known as the denominator-numerator rule that we worked with, well, ever since Lesson 11 this year. Um, and basically it's stating that you can multiply any fraction um, by some other number as long as it's equivalent to 1. Whatever you multiply the denominator by, you also multiply the numerator by that, and it won't change the value of the fraction. And we're going to use that to simplify these complex fractions. Okay, so in example 1 here, what we're going to do is use that rule and we're going to take the bottom half of this. So the denominator of the complex fraction is a fraction. And we're going to multiply the numerator of the complex fraction and the denominator of the complex fraction by the reciprocal of this. Because you hopefully remember, whenever you multiply a fraction by its reciprocal, you get a 1. And that'll help us simplify this thing. So we had, down here, x plus y over b. We're multiplying by its reciprocal, b over x plus y. And whenever we multiply by the denominator, we also multiply that by the numerator. This fraction I've just written is equivalent to 1 because it's something divided by itself. And so we're not changing the value, just its appearance. So those b's cancel. That x plus y cancels with this x plus y. Okay, so that this whole denominator here is just equal to 1 now. And then in the top part, that b and that b, one's in the numerator, one's in the denominator, so they cancel. And so this is just equal to a over x plus y. And that's it. All right, now I would like to show you an alternate way of doing these. In the space we have over here on the right. So I'm going to rewrite this original problem horizontally. We had a over b over x plus y over b. That's the same as divided by x plus y over b. And you know that whenever you're dividing by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So we have a over b times b over x plus y, which is exactly what we had over here. All right, so now those b's cancel, and we are still left with a over x plus y. So it works the same. It will always, you can use either method and get the right answer. So it's just personal preference. I am going to show you example two using the denominator and numerator rule. So that was our publisher's focus in this lesson. All right, so we have this bottom part. It's also the work is a little bit more compact. Um, we're going to do a plus b over c over a plus b over c. Because again, flipping that bottom fraction and then multiply that reciprocal times the top and bottom of our fraction. a plus b cancels with a plus b. c cancels with c. That was the whole point of multiplying by that, by that particular fraction. Now, in the top, we also have a plus b in the denominator and a plus b in the numerator, so they cancel. This whole thing is just equivalent to a over c, and that's all there is to that. Okay, part b is still going to be working with fractions, it's just these are going to have square roots in them. Okay, so... Um, just a reminder that we've already been simplifying square roots, and we never consider them simplified if you can still uh, find a perfect square factor. If we can do that, we do it, and then we can simplify that square root. Um, also, anytime you're working with fractions, you um, it's just standard practice. We do not consider a fraction completely simplified if there is a square root in the denominator. If we have one of them, we do what we call rationalizing it.
square roots that don't simplify to integers are not rational numbers. And we always want to have a rational number in our denominator only. So if the square root doesn't simplify, we're going to do this process to remove it from the denominator. So we have a few blanks to fill in, then we'll do these examples. An expression that contains square root radicals, okay, and a radical is just that square root symbol. That is a radical. An expression that contains one of them is in simplified form when no radicand, by the way, that's the number under the radical, uh, when no radicand has a perfect square factor and no radicals are in the denominator. Okay, and we'll show you that with these examples. So I have one here for you that is not the same as what they started out with in the book. All right, so one thing we know is we need to simplify our radicals and that square root of 48 has a perfect square factor. 48 has a perfect square factor. So this is equivalent to 30 over, and then this would be root 16 times root 3, because 16 times 3 equals 48. And, okay, square root of 16, that's 4. So we have 30 over 4 root 3. Okay, so now we have simplified the radical. Okay, so it's in, has, it has a radical. It's in simplified form, not yet. We did simplify the square root, so there's no perfect square factor anymore, but we have this radical in the denominator. So this is the new part. In order to get the root 3 out of the denominator, we multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. So we're using that denominator numerator rule again. Okay, and here's why this works. Now in the numerator you have 30 root 3 and in the denominator we have 4 times the square root of 9. I guess I'll just write it like that for the notes. We know the square root of 9 is 3. So what we have here really is 30 root 3 over 4 times 3, which I could have multiplied, but I also see that this will reduce. Okay, so I divide the denominator by 3, I divide the numerator by 3, because you still have to reduce fractions like normal also. Okay, now, also 10 and 4 are both even, so these will both divide by 2. And maybe just so I don't get too many things crossed out at once, I'll just come down here first. So we have 10 root 3 over 4 at this point. Okay, just after having divided by 3. These are both even. So our final answer is 5 root 3 over 2. Okay. The, the uh, radicand, the number under the radical, does not have a perfect square factor. There are no radicals in the denominator, and 5 over 2 doesn't reduce. So that now is simplified. Okay, and that's the sort of thing we're going to be doing with these other ones, only they're a little bit nicer, actually. I think they're a little simpler than the one I started you with. All right, so example 3. There's nothing to simplify under the radical. Root 5 does not simplify. We just can't leave it in the denominator. So multiply numerator and denominator by the square root of 5. That gives us 3 root 5 over root 5 times root 5 is 5. And we're taking 5 times 2. 5 times 2 is 10. 3 tenths doesn't reduce. So that one's done already. Okay? And then one more. I see square root of 12 in this one. That has a perfect square factor. So I'm going to rewrite this to simplify that first. 12 is 4 times 3. Okay, and we can simplify the square root of 4. So here we have 2 over 3 times 2 
root 3, which I could have just written a 6 right away, but I'm also just going to reduce that. Okay, so now we have 1 over 3 root 3. But we must not leave the root 3 in the denominator, so we multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. 1 times root 3 is just root 3. And now in the denominator, root 3 times root 3 is 3. But we take it times this other 3, which means 3 times 3, 9. There we go. It doesn't reduce. There's no perfect square factor of 3. And the radical was not in the denominator. And that's all there is to these.